Over the past year, we've experienced a pandemic, political upheaval, an economic disaster, and an unprecedented racial uprising. A perfect storm that has traumatized us individually and collectively. Over 500,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. May all their lives be a blessing. And as my dear mother used to say, they are better, they are in a better place. But I say, wait a minute, what about all of us left behind? What about the pain that we still feel? My brother, last February, he died due to complications associated with COVID-19. I know loss. All of us, all of us understand different stages of grieving and feel the pain of this loss. My point here is that it's not just the 500 plus thousand people who have died over the last year, it's the millions, the millions of us left behind to suffer the loss of our loved ones. It's the children who have lost their parents. It's the parents who have lost their children, brothers, sisters, aunts, colleagues, dear friends, love partners. They're all gone. We feel the pain. We feel that trauma. Not to mention how our lives have been altered over the past year. We're experiencing social isolation, remote learning, remote teaching, Zoom fatigue. We can't even go to the theater or listen to live music or go to a sporting event. My three-year-old daughter said to me the other day, Daddy, are all the germs gone? Can we please, please go to the library today? It just breaks my heart. Even my little three-year-old is feeling the pain. All of this is very traumatic. The trauma has impacted us individually and collectively, have been a witness to the upheaval over the past several years with the culmination of the riots and insurrection at the Capitol building on January 6th. What we have lived through politically has been very, very traumatic. The economic situation has become increasingly dire. I hear stories of children across the country who are food insecure, housing insecure. And I say, no, millions of our children are simply hungry. They are homeless. Many Americans are well beyond insecure. They are starving and they are living in the streets. And I truly, truly feel their pain deeply. Food pantries can't even keep up with the demand. People are out of work and they're hungry and they need food. 5.3 million women have left the workforce to care for their children and other family members. Many women have permanently lost their jobs due to the pandemic. And of course, as usual, people of color have disproportionately been impacted by the virus, medically, economically, politically, and racially. By nearly every metric, people of color feel it most. I think about the racial uprising we've experienced over the last year. The leading cause of death for African-American young men is murder. How could this be possible in what we refer to as the greatest nation in the world? This is the United States. Murder should not be the leading cause of death for any segment of our population. Black and brown people are being killed daily in the streets of these United States. Hate crimes against our Asian sisters and brothers have skyrocketed over the last year. Clearly, this is devastating to Asian families. And we all feel the impact of this senseless, barbaric violence. Again, individually and collectively, we are experiencing trauma. Of course, as Americans, we tend to minimize it as stress. Hey, let's just take a nap 
wake up, we'll feel better, and it'll go away. It's more than stress. And a nap is not going to heal us. It is trauma at the spiritual and for me at the soulful level. I would even argue that it has taken root at the cellular level, perhaps even changing our DNA for years to come. We can no longer equate this trauma with stress or some sort of low level depression. It's much de deeper. This trauma has permeated nearly every aspect of our lives. We find ourselves inexplicably sad, frustrated, angry, experiencing decreased productivity and a lack of focus. We become even more impatient with each other, sadly to say. Perhaps some are having difficulty sleeping. Maybe they're disengaged and at times are anxious about our future. So as we stop to assess why this is occurring and we do not have a concrete answer for how we're feeling, we have to realize that we have been through a great deal of trauma. During these trying times, I often turn to music to soothe my soul. Recently, I listened to the late, great Marvin Gaye. His prophetic words really resonated with me. He said, quote, mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there are far too many of you dying. He goes on to say, you know, we've got to find a way to bring some love here today. He then questions, quote, what's going on? What's going on? Don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me and you will see what's going on, end quote. I truly miss Marvin. I miss his spirit and of course I miss his musical talent. Um, but he has certainly left us with a great deal to think about and his words appear to be timeless. I just encourage us all to be kind to yourself, to be kind to each other and live a little bit of leisure and make sure that you're bringing wellness back into your lives.